Hello, everybody. How are you doing? Uh, I think we're going to um, carry on now and do the webinar. So welcome. This is a webinar um, all about um, collaboration using Office 365. Um, so let me just move this slide forwards. OK, so Office 365 has um, a lot of components to it. So what we thought we would do is give you a bit of a tour of Office 365. Um, and explain really how you use it for collaboration. Um, I did a, um, a kind of five minute demo the day um, to Altnet, which is our online networking group. And everyone was pretty shocked about how much there is in Office 365. And I guess because we use it and we're part of the Microsoft ecosystem, we forget quite a lot about um, really how much it's developed and how many things are in it. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go do a run through of most of the components um, and sort of what they are, why you would use them and how you use it to collaborate. And then I'm also going to do sort of a bit of a demo and show you a lot of the different technologies that we, we use as well and how we use it um, on our live system. Um, so um, you might see random emails popping up, so excuse, uh, excuse me for that. Um, so just a little bit about um, uh, really who we are. Um, so we're Spider Group. So Spider Group's been going uh, over 17 years now. And our aim really is to help people be empowered by technology and actually really like help them succeed and grow through it. And so certainly the, the tech side um, from our perspective is as you're growing, um, ultimately, um, let me just, uh, uh, as, yeah, as, as you're growing, um, you'll need to take on more staff and therefore collaboration becomes uh, more important really. Um, so, yeah, really, it's important that um, that yeah uh, that the technology sort of supports that. Really, I'm sorry, I just Natalie just asked me to do something quickly. Uh, I'm also just going to make sure quickly that we're recording this. Yes, we are recording. Uh, brilliant. Okay, lovely. Um, I don't know how to start your video, Natalie. You might have to do it yourself. Uh, yeah, sometimes Zoom, um, you're the host and, or I was the host and it was stopped. Never mind. Unfortunately, uh, you just have the logo for my face at the moment. We'll try and figure out why. You have to be a ghost from nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> but the slide in front of us shows what I look like. So that's me. Um, yeah, so Natalie's sort of helping out. Natalie's uh, experience is much more on the, the marketing digital side. So I'm going to be doing most of the talking um, on this webinar, I'm afraid. Um, okay, so let's, let's, let's push on a little bit. Uh, now we've done the introductions. So um, Office 365 actually recently has just been renamed to be Microsoft 365. So Microsoft as a company have done quite a pivot over the last sort of five years since Satya Nadella took over. And what they've decided is that actually everything needs to be under the Microsoft brand. So gone are the days where Microsoft... Um, Windows is their core product and their main thing that they make money from. And actually, um, services and devices are, are very much where they're at now. So I thought I'd just give you an overview of some of the common tools that, um, that you might have come across or maybe not. So there's Microsoft Teams, there's Microsoft SharePoint, there is OneDrive, both for personal and for business. There is an application called Staff Hub, which sits inside Teams, which is um, that allows you to do staff shifts. So if you're in a cafe or something like that, maybe not so relevant right at the moment, but that's a really great tool. There's Microsoft Planner, Microsoft Sway, Microsoft To Do, there's My Analytics, um, there's Microsoft Kazala, um, and then there's a whole load of Microsoft business apps that you get with business um, tiered um, licenses, such as Outlook Customer Manager, Microsoft Booking, Microsoft Invoicing, uh, Mile IQ which is a, um, allows you to track your mileage without actually having to fill out any forms. Um, and then there's also the Microsoft Power Platform, which is Power Apps, Power BI, and um, uh, what's now called Microsoft Power Automate, but used to be called Microsoft Flow. So as you can hear just from that, there's a huge number of tools that are inside this suite. And actually nearly all of them come just included as part of the, the main license. So you could have a, a £3.40 Business Essentials license, and actually you get access to loads of those different um, uh, capabilities. So the first one to talk about really um, is Microsoft Teams. And that is the, the cornerstone of the Microsoft Office 365, Microsoft 365 offering. 
it's um, Satya Nadella calls it your business operating system. So Microsoft have gone from a classic computer operating system to a business operating system. And Microsoft Teams is that hub. Um, so you have um, person to person chats, you have multi person chats, you have the notion of channels, um, you have, unsurprisingly, you have teams with inside it, um, and um, you have um, ability to do video phone calls and things like that. So I'm going to do really quick, I'm just going to stop the sharing, and then I'm just going to um, restart the share um, again, but I'm going to do it so that. I am sharing my computer sound. Okay, so we should be back. And so with the next thing is a, is a little video just to show you what Microsoft views is the power of Teams. I'm just gonna start that now. We've seen the impact team work has had on our world. But what if Teams could achieve even more? truly do great work. We need people that have different experiences and understand the world from a different perspective. The thing that's challenging is to make sure that there's a platform for that collaboration. Teams are very liquid. We need to keep up with the way our people like to work. What if people from different cultures and generations could come together in a more purposeful way, so ideas flow freely and evolve organically? Just imagine what we could achieve. Introducing Microsoft Teams in Office 365. Microsoft Teams is helping us accelerate and win on Sundays. Now we can share common ideas, common goals. I'm excited about the ability for people to be engaged in multiple teams and making it very easy for them to not have to go to 15 different places. Microsoft Teams is a chat-based workspace that gives people one place to connect and create in inherently human ways. You have that constant thread of communication that you can go back in history and see. It's all right there in a single interface. Accenture is nearly 400,000 people across 120 countries. To be able to engage and collaborate this way is a big game changer for us. A way that builds trust and helps create a natural rhythm so ideas flow freely and evolve organically. There's a lot of communication, there's a lot of data sharing. We're all sort of working towards the same end goal and that's to build a car that goes out on the racetrack to win. It's all happening real time in a very frictionless way. That's the way people expect to work these days. Because it's part of the Office 365 set of collaboration tools, it's part of what we already do. It's the central hub where the conversations happen. It opens possibilities for connection and collaboration that we never thought was possible before. And it's about empowering them and taking somebody's good idea and making it an awesome idea. It has truly made us more efficient. This is exactly what we've been waiting for. This is how we think the world of tomorrow will work. Welcome to Microsoft Teams. Together, there's no limit to what we can achieve. Okay, so sorry, um, sorry about the, um, the, the, the pause in the video. Uh, apparently you, you can't do anything while a video is playing, otherwise it stops the video. Um, so as I said, what we'll do is we'll do a quick demo about how Teams works and how we use it. Um, the key bit really is that nearly all the other components of um, Teams um, and the other Microsoft Suite um, items integrate into Teams, and I'll show you how we use it and how we do it. Um, so it's kind of a little bit like combining Slack, Zoom, and Trello and your, your filing cabinet all into one place. And actually, I do believe that it is becoming the um, business operating system. So one of the other key sort of fundamental components for uh, Office 365 or Microsoft 365 is SharePoint. So I'm going to show that in, in a minute. So we use this as our intranet and uh, quite a few of our clients use it as their intranet as well. And actually all of our documents are now stored on Team, uh, sorry, on SharePoint as well. So actually everything is all in the cloud and all available and all syncs. So we don't actually in our office have a, a traditional file server. Everything just lives on uh, Office 365. So it's obviously very secure. And actually, um, the Microsoft with using OneDrive, which I'll mention a bit more in a second, have made it so that actually it's just like accessing files off your, your computer as if you were sat with a server nearby. So it allows you to kind of really streamline processes. Actually, uh, all of Office 365 uses SharePoint as its storage in one way or other. So it's the fundamental sort of building block that everything else builds from. And I'll go into that a little bit more about how people collaborate with it. So OneDrive is something that I mentioned. So there's actually three kind of different bits of OneDrive. 
So there's the personal one, which um, people have had for a long time that work with their live IDs. Um, that's not really what we're talking about here, although it uses the same sort of client. There is the OneDrive for business, and that is a way of synchronizing files um, from a, like a central like storage area down to your computer. So the idea is that this will replace your my documents and your desktop and that's seeing everything that would live in the cloud. So uh, I use multiple devices. I store pretty much everything in my OneDrive unless it's sort of um, documents that I need to share with other team members. Um, then I then will put it in the, the relevant sort of, um, uh, well, I guess SharePoint or OneDrive location. And I'll go to that again in a minute. And it really allows uh, me to move between any of my devices without really having to worry about where I am, what I'm doing, because it's got to the, the, the tablet center or the mobile devices as well. So it's everywhere. And actually, because it's all stored in Microsoft Cloud, uh, they've got a lot of, um, uh, sort of search capabilities. And so you can search for documents and find them really quickly. And actually, that makes life much simpler. And I'll, I'll demo that in a minute. I should say, if you have any questions while we're going through this, then um, don't hesitate to ask the questions. Um, Natalie will um, relay any questions and I'll answer them in, in real time as we go along. Um, the next sort of core component of the collaboration um, is actually integrating everything with inside the native Microsoft Word, Excel, PowerPoint, uh, OneNote, um, and any of the other apps that you would use and actually making it so that you can work on a document and really quickly invite your colleagues in to join it. And I will show you in a second. Uh, but that's really, really powerful and we use it a huge amount uh, just because it makes it really easy for people to find exactly what you're working on and, and what they need to help on. Yeah, and if I can just interject slightly there. So before I joined Spider Group, I didn't realise remotely how powerful Microsoft 365 was. Um, and I remember thinking, oh no, but I'm used to Google's uh, G Suite, where it's really easy to share and collaborate on documents. And I mentioned this to James fairly early on, and he pointed out this circled share button, and it's it's no more complicated than it was in G Suite, which um, many years ago, it was a lot more complicated, I think. So I'm not sure people necessarily realize that it has that functionality as simply and quickly as any web-based sharing. I mean, that's really only been there in the last sort of 18 months to sort of 24 months. Um, Microsoft with subsequent generations of Word and Excel and stuff have really upped their game and it's actually, it's, it's good. And it actually has all the power of all the Microsoft suite as well. So the next bit that we think is really great is Forms. So it's very quick and easy, all within part of your normal subscription, just to go and create a form. As you can see, we did an alternate one to ask people what they thought and what days worked for them when we were sort of quite early on. Um, you can use it for getting feedback on projects. So when we're doing um, uh, uh, sort of intranet projects for customers, we create a form, we get them to distribute it amongst their, their staff, and then they can put in stuff that they think would be really useful for them um, to know about and to kind of um, to feedback on what they want in their intranet. So we use it for lots of different things. We use it for recruitment as well. Um, you can use it for employee satisfaction. Um, one of the new ones that we're looking at doing as well is for taking phone messages. Um, our office in Liverpool are going to take more messages and um, rather than just emailing it into the relevant teams, we're going to get them to fill out a little form. It's almost like the little notes you used to get left on your desk about someone's call, can you call them back? So it can be used for that. Another one that I've seen it used um, with this and actually with um, one of the other um, uh, systems called um, uh, Power Apps is um, using it for the um, like the desk, uh, the front desk when you go into an office. So you fill that out, and then all the automation stuff works, and it'll you know store responses in here or or in Excel or whatever, and it, it's it's better. Um, we do have a question that's just come through about forms. Um, Mark asked, so forms is good for doing surveys instead of Survey Monkey. Uh, uh, yeah, pretty much. Um, it's not quite as advanced as Survey Monkey, but for quite simple forms. Um, absolutely you can use this and as I said you can then store it any way you want so you can then store it in Excel or you can make it email you or quite a lot of different bits what I'll do is I'll just show you in a minute how that works um, just like SurveyMonkey you can do different types of questions so obviously on this example we've got a star rating and a multi-select you can do single line uh, or multi-line text responses you can do 
um, all sorts of different responses the same way you can in SurveyMonkey. Thank you. Uh, thanks for the question. Um, the next one to show is um, Microsoft Planner. Um, the image isn't great, but it's, it's an equivalent of Trello with inside the, the Microsoft environment. And the idea is you create sort of buckets and labels and you add tasks in there and it allows you to really quickly brainstorm. So you could be sat on a, um, like a Teams meeting and someone can be adding this and you can have it in front of you and you can see how that works and it will all sort of fill in and you assign stuff and give it dates. Um, and there's some really nice sort of visual sort of um, boards that show you how well, you know, how well people are getting on. Um, and it has like reminder emails and it's, it's, it's really sort of, it's good from a team task management perspective. Um, and yeah, very visual. Um, well, again, we'll come on to that again in a minute. So to do um, is very much a personal um, sort of uh, task management system. Although the interface has been updated quite a lot recently to, to bring in all the, um, the planner stuff. It also will show you any flagged emails you've got. So when you flag emails in your, in your Outlook uh, or on the web access, it will then show up in here. Um, and one of the, the recent additions actually is you can have shared to-do lists. Um, and Natalie and I use that quite a bit for when we're doing our planning from a marketing perspective. We'll sit and fill that out and assign it to each other, you know, to the relevant person. And then we'll, we'll do, you know, work through that. And I'll show you why that's quite useful um, in a bit in the way that you use the important and the my day. Uh, so I hadn't figured out how to use it and Natalie mentioned to me that while ago, I said, ah, oh, this is how I use it. And I said, wow, that's brilliant. That's actually, you know, a really good way of using it. And so we'll go into that in a second. Um, we're getting sort of through these. Um, so Microsoft Bookings is, is great. So it allows you to give out restricted access to your calendar um, and create a link in your email or sort of embed something in the web page, which allows people to book things directly into your calendar without risking exposing your calendar and you can ask them to fill out questions you can pick how people do it in terms of buffer time in terms of actually i don't want anyone to book a meeting with that half an hour buffer between them um, between that and other meetings um, and it really allows you to kind of put people in control of getting in touch with you which actually is great because it's not just internal collaboration but it's actually working out um, how we do that so we use this kind of technology a huge amount so it's actually in hubspot which we use as well um, but the Microsoft version is, is just as good um, in terms of, you know, getting those appointments to your calendar and sending reminders and things like that. And I'll, I'll show that again in a minute. And it streamlines collaboration in a way that, you know, you can send someone an email that says, click this link, book a time in my calendar. You don't have six or seven emails back and forth with, can you do Tuesday at 11? No, I've got a webinar. Okay, how about 12? And all that back and forth, you can just say, here's the link, book into my calendar. And it's one of those really nice ways that Microsoft streamlines something that can take a while of back and forth um, so that you can focus on the collaboration rather than the back and forth part of it. So the next bit is my analytics. And so this is uh, really interesting because Microsoft obviously by using their collaboration platform, they've got a huge amount of data in terms of what's going on, um, who you're working with, how you're interacting. And so what they've done is they've put together a, like an AI dashboard, which brings all of that together and actually gives you some insights into some of the key bits. So do you have enough time in your database to focus? Um, how much time are you actually spending in meetings with others? Who are the most important people? One of the ones that it came back um, to me with was around, um, you seem to have a lot of meetings with these same people. Do you have to go to all of them or could, could you split it up? And some of you go to some of them and then report back together, which I thought if we were a bigger company, that would be a really interesting thing. Actually, some of them are our management meetings. And so actually that doesn't really work, but actually that kind of insight is really powerful. Um, the next product is uh, Power Automate, which used to be called Flow. And the idea behind that is that all this data that's in the Microsoft platform it can then take that and it can do things with it based on triggers and actions and events that happen. And actually it can take away a lot of the, the data entry drudgery of making sure that data sort of exists anywhere it needs to be in your, in your system. Um, we'll touch on that a little bit towards the end. We're actually going to do another webinar um, a little bit later on, which actually goes into how you use Power Apps, Power Automate to make you know, what you're doing much easier. 
um, and actually more streamlined. So I won't touch too much on that, but that's a really great product if you're a bit more of a, um, a power user. And then the, the key bit really is that all of these things really just come together in, in one and that really then um, means that everything is at your fingertips. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna just end the slideshow and I am going to um, go through some bits that I prepared earlier. So standard email that everyone has, um, I'm showing mostly the web versions just because it's kind of easy in what we're doing. And so you can see from, this is called the waffle at the top here in the corner. Um, and so this allows you to then sort of see all the different tools you've got. So there's a, there's a few in here we're not even gonna to touch on. So this is really great. Um, one of the bits that I really love that we've added in recently is a little sort of calendar um, sort of pop out, but also actually it all integrates with to-do. So you can see all the different things that you're working on and you can then just pop that out. And actually if you're on the calendar view, one of the things in terms of working quite efficiently, so if I do that again on tasks, is then I can then just drag that onto my calendar and I've just taken my, take my tasks and popped it straight onto my calendar so I've then got a time slot to do it. And so when I look at my calendar for the day, I can see what's going on there, which is really, really powerful. From a collaboration perspective, you can see back in, uh, in that outlook, in the calendar section, you can open up other people's calendars. Uh, we've all shared all of our calendars internally because there's no reason not to, but James can then open up see my calendar and therefore see when I have time available to collaborate or if we're both supposed to be in the same meeting and so you can have multiple people's calendars open at once and really see when you have time available for that collaboration. What I'm going to do quickly is I'm going to show so if I do if I click on my calendar create a meeting with Natalie I can then expand that out and when I add Natalie in, you'll notice that the, the calendar on the right hand side will change. And so what it's done is it's added in Natalie and it's showing me times that are good for each of us. You can notice down at the bottom here, it's showing us what times work for us. So it allows me to choose that. And it's actually given me some suggestions. So it's making it easier for me to collaborate. And then if I want to make this a Teams meeting, which all of our meetings are at the moment because we're not doing them in person, I just check a button and I hit send. And then behind that meeting, if I just go and find that now, um, what we can see is it's instantly put a join Teams meeting button in here, which then means I don't need to go, you know, trying to figure out how to get into Teams and do the bits I need. Um, so the other sort of amazingly powerful bit, if I now go into Teams, and so I can either show the, the client or, or this one. So it, there's a kind of bit in Teams. So actually that meeting is just here and I just hit join. And again, that makes it really easy and simple. And actually within here, I can do other bits. So I can add in a whiteboard. Um, I can add in meeting notes. So I haven't talked too much about OneNote. Um, we'll come on to that in a little bit. And I can see the normal stuff in here. Again, an even nicer view to see what's going on in terms of what we can do this. I can add in other people. So I can add in uh, Vicky. That then pulls that through. And then I can see what time Vicky's got stuff. So I can then easily move things around. So in terms of finding those the slots in people's um, calendars, it's, you know, it's obviously really powerful. Um, actually, I can then add, add files and other bits. So Teams is, Teams is um, a really interesting application. I'm gonna drop into the, the main client now. So one of the things that we have is, we have these action points, uh, sorry, these activities. And so I can see when I've missed calls, I can see, so we use it as our phone system as well. Um, you'll notice up here, it says I'm in do not disturb. So what I didn't want is, because I've got this open to show you, I didn't want something coming in and sort of um, uh, taking the focus away um, and people calling me. So yeah, we, we, I can see all the communications. So I get notified of activities. I can see chats um, uh, internally. So I can see a meeting I had earlier. I was doing some training for the finance team on using HubSpot um, sort of channels and the, using the communication stuff in that. I can see all the different teams that we have. So we're running a, um, a weekly event. I'm not sure who mentioned it. You're welcome to come along. Um, a networking event. And so I, I created this to show that. So we're inside here, we have files. For instance, we have the rotor for who the speaker's gonna be. Uh, I've created a wiki. Um, and these are sort of the, the, the teams. And then when inside each team, you have a channel. So if I wanted to create a new channel, I can do that. So I could create one, say, promotion. Um, I can choose who has access to it. 
and I'm going to automatically add that to everyone's list. I'm going to hit add. And it's just going to create me a promotion channel. So what I might want to do from here as an example is I might want to create a, uh, a promotion planner about what we're going to do and when. So I, if I want to, I can create lots of different tabs. So I'm going to create a planner on here. Um, I'm going to give it a new name and we're going to call it Altnet Promotion. And then I'm going to save that. And so what this is going to do is because it's all integrated, it's going to go off in the background to planner and it's instantly created me a planner here. And I now have that. I can just, I can jump out and I can go directly to the planner inside the actual planner application. And so I can add here, I can assign it to Natalie, I can set a due date. I can add that task. And when I now go back into my Teams, uh, within a few seconds, it'll update, and I can now see that's in there as well. And um, I've just okay. instantly got a notification that I have a task in Planner that James has just assigned me. So it's really instantaneous collaboration, because if I wasn't on here uh, and I was in a different meeting, I'd still get that notification and know, and then it would go immediately into my Planner app. and I can add it to my to do. It will go into my to do as well. So. So could you add? Could you add me one, please, Natalie? Yes, of course. Um, and then you'll see. Um, you'll see in a minute. Um, uh, teams will light up and show me the things I've got. Um, um, so you can create buckets. Um, so one of the ways that we've used this is. Um, we sometimes do. So we, um, part of our coaching, we have. Um, um, like um, quarterly um, targets. So we'll create a, a bucket for each week and then we'll add a load of tasks. Another thing that we'll do as well is we'll label them. So I can change the name of the label. Um, so Natalie's just assigned me a task, as you can see, a chat thing's just popped up, an activity and a planner thing's just happened all at the same time. So the planner app has just messaged me and told me I've got another task to do. I go to planner, I can then see all the tasks that I haven't started. So it's another task in here and all the ones that I have completed, excuse me, it's actually bringing everything together all into one place to make life sort of simpler for me. So again, it's in here, so you can see that's in there. I can go in here, I can mark that as completed, I can change other bits on it, and that's kind of, that's done, and life's a lot simpler. So as you can see, this is all inside Teams, but we'll carry on talking a little bit more about Teams. So we've got the calendar in Teams, we've got calls, so from our perspective, um, we've got all the, the phone system in it, so I can quickly call relevant people I need to. I can add groups, I can add speed dials, it's, that's very useful. Um, any of the files I've been accessing recently show up in here as well. So I can go and quickly find my files. So um, I can look at our KPIs, I can look at um, one of the things we're doing in terms of updating our, how we allocate time for our tech. Um, and we can see specific Microsoft Teams files that people have sent me in Microsoft Teams. Um, I can also then, it takes a moment, um, I can then go see all the ones I've downloaded onto my machine. Um, and I can also then go and see my, my OneDrive, um, which then shows all the stuff that's in my OneDrive. And I can, I don't know, I can quickly go through and I can look at all the different bits in here. So really powerful. And actually one of the things you can do is you can add more bits onto the side. So for instance, shifts I very briefly mentioned earlier. Shifts is a way of um, uh, creating calendars and timelines and actually adding people into shifts and um, for smallest companies that maybe offer uh, operate 24 hours or maybe they have a shop you can use this for like scheduling all of the people shifts they're going to do so again really powerful um and one note is also integrated into that so that's that's team so we use this this is kind of the hub of our world and how we do stuff um can you just explain a little bit more about um channels versus group chats oh okay yeah absolutely so okay so channels and group chats there's a lot of it's based around how you want to be notified about things so if you're if someone if you're in a channel and um someone says something it might actually be easier if you you type natalie so if you say hi james yeah um, and i'm going to move away so if you start to type hi james and sort of save it in the promotion tab it it won't be obvious to me if I'm working on something else that something's going on. So what this has done is it's highlighted it in bold so that I can see that someone's written something. So I can see there's a message. I don't really know what's going on. 
if Natalie does it, but she tags me um, as at James, then you can see, I don't know if you heard the noise, but a little thing comes through and I get an activity alert as well. And I get a little thing with a, a notification number. So I can then see that Natalie's tagged me. So actually it's quite easy to notify people, but what it means is, and so, um, so what it means is that actually you're not bombarded with communication, you're dealing with it in your own time. So as an organization, we broadly don't have any internal email going on now. Everything's done in teams and actually um, everyone's been in that, that place where you end up getting loads and loads of reply all emails going on. And you actually think to yourself, I, I don't want to be part of this conversation. So if every conversation is actually in teams and is nearly always done in, in channels and in the, in the, in the team section here, then you can dip in and do what you want. And then if you are needed, then someone can tag you and it will come up and then let you know. The chat bits are different. So I can create a chat. Um, I can chat with Natalie and other people. And as you can see, um, when I chat, so if Natalie, so if I move away, if Natalie then um, chats to me, you'll see because it's a direct chat to me, Natalie wants my attention. So when Natalie sends me a message, um, I will get that same pop up again. So it, I get a little noise. And I get the chat come up and I can see, oh, it's Natalie, as she said hello to me. Um, so actually that's really useful in terms of um, like managing that communication. And you can put multiple people in here and we do have multiple team chats. So um, we've actually ended up with a chat from the tech team. So we have a daily stand up. And actually what that means is um, we no get notified every time someone puts a thing. So I can actually see on here as well that someone is, is writing. So you can see the, the, the ellipse is um, sort of animating. Um, so you can see actually, I've just had another notification come through. So my PA just added something in that, um, that group chat. And so I can then go and respond to that and deal with that. So that's, that's kind of the difference between um, sort of channels, teams and the chat and the group chat. Yeah, because uh, as I'm in that chat, I got a pop-up notification to say that something was written in there. Whereas if it was in a channel, I wouldn't get that notification because I'm not specifically tagged. Okay, so that's, that's Teams and that's those bits. So what we'll move on to now, so you see it's all replicated exactly the same in the web view. So it's really, really powerful. Um, so we talked a little bit about Planner already. So when you go into Planner, um, let me just actually refresh this. So when you go into Planner, you, you get um, like this overview, as you can see. So we have a, like a weekly level 10, and you can see um, what's going on in terms of tasks. We can see our Q1 rocks. We can see I've got a personal one. Um, we've got the tech webinar series. Um, so I can then drill into one of these and I can see what's going on. So if we go, um, let's go and find um, that planner. Um, actually, we'll go this way to find it. Um, I'm just trying to find an appropriate planner to share with everybody. Um, so you notice that the Altnet one isn't in this list. So if I go to the Altnet one and I click on the star, then that means it's now coming up as the top one here. So again, we can see the charts. We can see any scheduled stuff in there. It's a really great way of collaborating with the team. So plan is a really core cool one that people should be thinking about of sort of collaborating using Office 365 and then drawing that into teams to do that. So uh, it's, this is kind of really, as I've showed you, you're just gonna go in, you add a new bucket. So with inside here, um, you'll be able to like, see the, the labels. Um, so one of the bits is really great is you can filter by labels as well. So I can filter by pink or red. Um, I can fit, filter by dates. I can group by buckets. I can group by labels. It just really gives you a really nice way to slice and dice the information to do what you want. And if you go to the, settings you can change the name of the labels as well are you going to add something there natalie i was going to say and can you name the labels so that they make more sense so that you might have pink for social media you know as this is a promotion planner um you might change the word pink for social media then you might have orange for email marketing so that those labels make more sense you can, I'm trying to remember where they do it though. Um, so one of the, the slight challenges is, as I mentioned, a lot of this functionality has um, happened over the last couple of years is Microsoft are relentless in their updates. Um, so you'll, you'll, you'll sort of log in one day and they'll find some amazing new function and you're like, wow, that's brilliant. 
And so um, you wouldn't necessarily know where, you know, um, so they've moved it. So you used to have a little button that you used to go onto label and you used to change it. So if I go into here, can I change it off of here? Let's choose the labels. Um, it doesn't look like it. No. So we, we do have planners where the labels are named. So we do. So we had them in this one here. Let me just scroll over. And so we had it between different things. When I filtered it, I could choose sales, MQLs, and upsell and whatever. So yeah, absolutely, it does do it. But I don't remember where it is. Luckily, there's a, <laughs> quite a lot of information on the internet about that. Um, so we'll move on from Planner. Um, so the next bit is around SharePoint. So as I said, SharePoint's really interesting in that SharePoint actually is your intranet, but it's also the hub of where all the documents are stored. So for instance, if I go into, say, digital, all the documents that the digital team are inside here. And then what I can then do is I can then hit a sync button here and I'll open that. So it's going to open up my um, OneDrive. Now, when I go to um, Explorer, I'm just going to move this over here. When I go to Explorer, all of that now is now going to come streaming down in here. Um, and actually, this functionality works just as well with um, uh, with uh, Windows as it does with Macs. It's you know Microsoft have really got their their sort of game um, up to the right level in terms of cross platform. Um, I could have just as easily done this webinar using uh, my Mac, that would have not been a problem either. And actually it, it's all inside here and that's great. But to get this functionality here, um, I have OneDrive um, installed on my computer and it understands that when I click that sync, it's gonna bring it down. And so it's created me a spider group folder and so all my documents live in here. So if I create a new document in here, so I create a new, uh, I've got a new Word document, I can then, let me just move that across, it's just opening my word. Um, so it's all in here and I can say, hi, this is a document. And so it will then, so now what it's doing is it's auto saving it. So because it's saved in a cloud location all the time, it's just going through and saving it. Um, it's obviously then got all the, the Microsoft intelligence about um, trying to make things so that um, they make sense. Um, although Natalie helps me quite a lot with that. And so one of the things I can do is, because Natalie doesn't necessarily know I've created that document, if I share this document, okay, well, we have to wait a moment for it to sync up. And once it's synced, the, the share here will then be much more interactive. So if I go and open up one of the other documents that's already synced, so I open up this one, let me just drag this over. Um, if I now share that one, it knows that this is already in the cloud. So I now just try Natalie. Natalie will get an email notifying her that she's got that. And then when Nappy opens that, I'll be able to see because we'll, um, you'll get another sort of little symbol up there. And so Nappy can actually work on these documents simultaneously with me. Actually, we do that quite a lot. So quite a lot of the time when we're doing sort of webinar decks or we're doing proposal decks, we're, we're working on things, we'll do it at the same time. And that's really, really powerful. As you can see, Natalie's now here. So Nappy could add our first slide in there and these things will just sort of suddenly happen um, and actually it's a lot of work Microsoft did in the background with all the file formats to allow this to work. So that's all stored in SharePoint. It'll all be visible through Teams. I can open it in the normal apps. If I go to file and open recent, then you'll be able to see all the ones that we're, we're working on. So the last one we were working on was the collaboration webinar one. Um, and that, yeah, absolutely does the, the bits. Oh, I just reloaded. Where is PowerPoint gone? Um, so as you can see that reloaded, let me just do that. And oh. it's now resyncing because I just made a change to it. Okay, great. Let me just, what's not very handy is my PowerPoint now, it just keeps crashing. <laughs> open that one. Okay, so it's, let me open that. So it's all in here and it'll be syncing and it'll, it'll do what we, what we need. So that's kind of SharePoint. So SharePoint is like a document store but as I said, it's also great as an intranet. So one of the things that we've built into ours is a thing that we call the spider way. Um, we have a way for everyone to kind of be involved as an organization. 
So I can understand about org chart, about templates, about what our vision and values are. And it's all inside this internet so that even when we're in a place where we can't put stuff around the office, people still have access to all the bits that we are, we are doing. Um, so the next bit I want to talk about was OneNote, and I'm aware that we're starting to get a little bit shorter on time. So I use OneNote massively, and all the OneNote stuff is stored um, on SharePoint again. So this one's actually stored in my personal um, OneNote, that's uh, my OneDrive. So you can see I actually got a personal one, and I've got a spider group one, and I've got a like a, a company folders one. So these are the three. So this is my actual, like my spider group documents. These are my personal documents. And my OneDrive that I work on most of the time is just stored in here. So you can see that's my OneDrive there. And that's it's storing that in the OneDrive online system. So if I go back to here, so I might see on my iPad as well at the moment, you see my iPad. And so I can now just um, write on here. And then because it's all syncing in real time um, with um, the cloud, um, I can just write um, on here. And again, um, um, Natalie and I use this for when we're doing remote meetings and we need to take notes. We'll have one that open together and we'll both be adding into the document. And so it's then, you know, really useful um, to sort of collaborate and share notes. So one of the things that we started doing is instead of when we're like sort of doing our different calls, all the notes go in one note. And actually then it makes it easier to then do the proposals or the write-ups or the, the processes we're writing because it's all obviously stored electronically. And one of the things you can do is sort of highlight this and you can then convert it to say, you know, make it into text and whatever. So very powerful. And um, one of the bits that I, I find really useful, I'm just gonna share this, that has happened recently, is in certainly on the Windows version, it's not quite come to Mac yet, but you can click these things and you can click um, dictate. And so um, it wants to have access to my microphone and then it will then start putting the text in without me having to type. You can see, very powerful, very quick way of doing it. Actually, on Teams, you can now do captions and things like that using that same technology. That's a good way of sort of capturing all that information in the organisation. So it means that when you're collaborating, you don't necessarily have to have a note taker. You can have dictate on, and it will, you know, help take those notes during a meeting where you're trying to collaborate, trying to share ideas. That's OneNote. Uh, I mentioned already um, OneDrive. So there's a separate OneDrive bit in here and that's this bit here. So I can see the, all my files in there. And again, I hit the sync button that'll sync stuff to me. Um, I can use Power Automate. So when something's uploaded, it can do something if I want. Um, so one thing um, that you could potentially do is take a picture of a document, save it into OneDrive, and then you could make it submit it to do OCR or, or do other sort of process automation. You can also see what I have been shared with me, what I'm sharing to people. That's also really powerful. Um, one of the things that, that I came across recently, which was um, amazing, um, if I just create a new folder here, um, I'm gonna call it um, upload to me. So I'm gonna create an upload to me folder. Let me just go and find that. One of the things that's really um, uh, clever is on here, you can um, get people, so you can send someone a link so that they upload a document to you. Maybe I'll just do it at this level. Uh, let's just do here. So if I do request files, um, so I request that. I then copy that link, I put it in email. And someone else can click it and they can copy files into my OneDrive without them having to have OneDrive or anything. It's, it's very clever. So it means that if someone needs to give you a big file, you can get away from this. Can you send it by this way? Can you do that? It's too big to email. You just create a, a, a folder and you send the file request to them in their email. They click it. They can just upload the files over a browser and you're done. And then it will then notify you when you've got files. It was a really easy of getting files to you and collaborating again with external people, but really, really useful. So worth trying that one. Um, we've talked about planner already, um, the dragging and dropping stuff between. Um, okay, so we're on to now on to to do. So one of the things that's going to happen actually in the next sort of six months, Microsoft released a lot of guidance about what's going on with their um, um, with the, the products. Is they're going to make it so that in planner 
instead of it saying planner, it's going to say tasks and actually it's going to bring um, planner and to do all together. So as you can imagine, Microsoft's got a lot of applications and sometimes at the beginning, not all of them have a, like a clear story about how you're supposed to use them, but they're doing quite a lot of work of integrating stuff together now. So I can go, so this is, this is my to do. Um, that's the link for the webinar. So what, one of the things that I can do, which is quite useful, is I can go through all my different task lists. And then from there, I can then say, okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make that important. And then they're now going to appear important. And I can say, actually, I want to do this today. So I'm going to do control T and I'm going to add it to my day. So I then go to my day and I can actually go from a lot of important tasks that I want to do this week. And this, was, this is what Nafi suggested. It's use important for things to do this week. And then, then add it into my day for things you want to get done. So I can then add that in, um, and that's going to add it to my day. And I can do that one, and it's going to bring it into my day, and then I can then work on those. And then at the end of the day, it then pushes it back, and then I can see what was in my to do yesterday. So with the Office 65 webinar day, I did do that. So I'm going to mark that as done. Quite a satisfying little ring. And again, that's useful. But for like for shared ones. So we have like a content backlog of all the content we want to produce. So Natalie and I are both in here. And then what I'm going to do is I can then assign it to Natalie. And again, it's another way of us working well together. We can add a file, we can add notes, we can add multiple steps. It's a really great way of collaborating and bringing everyone in. So Natalie and I have a, like a standing meeting where we talk about this, update this document. And this, this is basically a way of storing all the tasks that we need to do in a way that we can all work nicely. As I said, I mentioned about um, uh, this is coming from my Outlook. So if I click on this in my Outlook, I can click it and I can just jump straight out to Outlook and that makes life very simple and easy. Um, so that's to do, recommend it. It's on all the devices. It's quite useful just to sort of plan your day on, on your phone or on a tablet before you then actually start the day. Um, bookings is another externally facing um, sort of collaboration tool. So as I mentioned, you can, um, it will integrate your calendar. So you just go to the bookings bit in here. And from here, you can then essentially just create this page. So the page looks like this. So you can choose what kind of meetings people can have with you. Um, you've got a calendar here. So when I click on that one, it then shows the uh, available slots in my calendar. So you can book on there for 12.30, can then add your details in, all that kind of stuff. Um, I've added an extra field in here for what the topic for the meeting is. You hit book, and then that'll put it directly into my calendar. It'll email the other person the meeting invite, and that means that you, the, the person you're giving it to can look at their calendar, and they can pick the time that you can do, rather than, as Natalie said, this, can you do this time, can you do that time, you know, seven, eight emails later, and you just pick up the phone because it's just too much hassle. You can empower someone else to do that, and that's obviously really, really useful. Um, so I recommend setting up the bookings bet. If you need any help with that, then just reach out to us. Um, this is actually my analytics. So it looks at my, um, my pattern, see who I'm working with. So there's 95 people. Um, I worked on 11 cloud documents outside of my working hours. So I was obviously working outside of my normal working hours. Um, I read all, almost over half my emails in 30 minutes of receiving them which my business coach, if he's on here, will tell me off. I'm supposed to be scheduling my time to do my email. So that's a bit naughty. So it's going to be suggestions about what I do. Um, so this is a way of, of working out how to collaborate. I can also look at my collaboration habits. 11% um, in emails, 48% in meetings. So, you know, really quite useful to kind of start digging into what's going on. This is the kind of the power of the cloud. And you can kind of see chats and calls, emails read, emails sent we can kind of see what's going on. So really useful. Um, we're kind of coming to the end of this now a little bit. Um, so flow is something that's great for collaboration. So um, we use flow for gathering information and doing different things in the business. So one of the things is when something's created in one of our other applications, it then sort of fires stuff in and um, uh, then we're then able to do a lot of automation based on that and do things. So I'm looking at what team flows I have. Okay, let me just change it to this one here. All right, I won't fix that now. Uh, so what teams have we got? So quote accepted, it then fires off a flow. And if I go and look at it, 
one of the team here built this it then just goes and creates a load of um, like things so it does this it does that it adds it into a SharePoint list uh, puts all the fields in and that just brings everything together for us in a really nice simple way um, so flow and well so power automate is now called it's massively powerful but you kind of need to understand a little bit about what you want to do first um, we actually have projects so project isn't part of the standard license but actually it kind of looks like um, that planner now so Microsoft are re-engineering all of what goes on with um, uh, with project. But the bit I wanted to show you is Power BI. So Power BI will allow you to pull lots of data in and then basically um, view what's going on. So one of the ways that we could use Power BI, so if I go back to one of my teams and I go to this, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a Power BI onto here. So I can go and find an existing one, so I can go and find a workspace. Um, I actually don't know where the one is I was just looking at. I don't know if there's a project one, uh, so we're looking here. So I can see if there's any sort of Power BI's that exist. Um, okay, so I can go and look at, um, okay, so I'll pick that one. So there's not gonna be a lot of useful data in it, but you, you'll get the point. So it's now bringing my Power BI data directly into um, this. So we're inside the Teams again, we've got all the bits we need. Um, on here, I can add in a OneNote, so I can add in an existing OneNote or a brand new OneNote. So I can add in a particular section here, so I can then show that and then people can uh, work on that. So if I go daily and then put today's, um, it allows me to build a really great hub of how people work. Um, I've got a lot of notes in here, so this will take a bit of time. Um, but hopefully you get the idea of how that works. Um, and then, that's it. That's, that's hopefully a good overview about how we use um, all the Office 365 suites to collaborate. Um, I believe there's a, a few um, uh, questions. Um, do you want to, have you got those, Natalie? Yep. Yeah. So we had a question about using Dictate, um, whether you could use it for a meeting lasting, say, an hour, which you can. If it's a meeting, it can get a bit challenging. Um, just because it's not going to necessarily identify who's speaking and it will struggle if people are speaking over one another. Uh, indeed. I mean, so one of the things you can do instead, depending on whether you want to do it, is what you could do is you go to insert um, and you can um, insert audio. So this is kind of different. So this is now recording and it's going to actually leave the recording inside my um, OneNote. So it's not going to... Um, convert it and I stop it and then I've got that there and so I can then play it um, and I don't know, if you, don't know if you can hear this no you probably can't um, and I can then just record that whole thing in there so I'm storing it all in a central place which then is then accessible easily and obviously um, with OneNote you mentioned shared notes uh, like you and I have but can you also share individual notes without sharing a whole folder you can um, so what you do is so on here you use that, that share button again but what you do so you have to be really careful about this actually so if you do this one here it will show your entire one note so if you've got like HR and sort of uh, like one-to-one -one notes you wouldn't want to share all of it but if you send a copy of the page um, and then you choose the application you want to send it in um, it will then just share um, a PDF of that bit so that's actually just sent all of that so if you do it on the um, um, on the iPad which so I use it quite a lot I like to write on the iPad um, it, so that sent those information actually in there on the iPad it just does it as a PDF and sends that over so yes you can share an individual one um, like that so if you have a load of um, pics and stuff you want to be careful how you share it but yeah you can and can you can you have multiple people editing something like a document all at once? Absolutely, yes, you can. So what, what happens is on the on the Word document, um, you or, or whatever, you get an area which then gets highlighted with a different colour, and then it has the person's initials by. And it normally what it does, it locks that, that paragraph or that sentence so that um, you then don't have both trying to edit the same thing and then end up with a weird version. So absolutely you can. Um, as long as you're storing it on your OneDrive or SharePoint or one of the, like the team's cloud locations, then absolutely you can then edit it. 
So what I didn't show is a lot of the time um, um, people will then um, say edit a document. So I just come out of this. So people will edit a document actually, um, do I like this one? Uh, will edit a document actually just in the browser on here as well. So it's all sort of going on there. Um, so you can then insert and do whatever. So um, it all kind of just works from the online version. But it's not quite as fully powered. So you don't get out of the AI stuff and a lot of the um, like full features, but actually you can do it on there or you can do it in the same application. And you always have like a handy link, which then um, allows you to open it very quickly inside um, the other document here. Hopefully that answers that. Uh, Are there any more questions, Natalie? Uh, I think we've answered them all the others as we've gone along, actually. Okay, great. Just looking um, at true. Excellent. So what I'll do then is we'll just uh, wrap this up. So I'm going to share this. So Microsoft's aim is uh, integrating everything together. Um, by no means are they done. They're actually trying to, uh, the whole platform, as I said, is going through a lot of change. It's evolving all the time. But actually, with everything that's going on, they've taken on a lot of feedback and there's a lot of great new features and capabilities coming on that are going to be really great for everybody. So uh, from, from everyone's perspective, um, we're offering, so the next steps, every webinar needs to have next steps. If you watch our um, webinar, I've had webinars. Um, next steps is a vital part. So um, we're offering everyone a 30 minute free or complimentary tech consultation. So we're happy to have a chat to you about what your company um, requirements are, how you're using it and give you advice and point you in the right direction about how to do it. And obviously that's, that's all for free. And then if, if there's some complicated stuff that you don't want to tackle on your own, then we're obviously here to help uh, if, that's, if that's of use. Um, so um, tomorrow we've got our Altnet virtual networking, which is um, every week, and that's from uh, 12 to one. Um, if you go to spidergroup.com slash Altnet, you'll be able to sign up for the next one. So if you're watching a video uh, recording of this, then we do them every week. So you can still come along to that and we'd love to see you there, that'd be great. And our next webinar will be on um, Tuesday the 19th of May. And this is a marketing one. So we're alternating marketing and tech. And it should be, and it will be covering what marketing you should be doing right now, considering the, the economic environment we're in and um, the sensitivity, the compassion that we need to have in, in what we're doing in terms of marketing. So I hope you enjoyed uh, this webinar and hopefully um, see you at the next one. Thank you very much, everybody. Cheers. Bye.